<laughs> All right, we are broadcasting live. Welcome to Phil's First Party Parlay, where we talk all things timely and topical in the insurance restoration industry. I'm Phil Sanoff, trial lawyer with Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group. With Morgan & Morgan's Insurance Recovery Group, I have 55 of the most awesome attorney colleagues you would ever want to know. We are in 25 offices, 13 states, all across the country. If you have any problem with any insurance claim, you need to come see us. We can help you wherever you are. You can reach us through our website, forthepeople.com, hit pound L-A-W from any cell phone, anywhere, or just get me on my personal cell, 713-825-3444. Morgan & Morgan Insurance Recovery Group, come see us. Joining us tonight on Phil's First Party Parlay is my friend, Fred Ricky Pye, one of those awesome attorney colleagues. Ricky, please hit that button, magic button and come back to see us. Good evening, Phil, how are you? I'm great, I'm great, thank you, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me on tonight. Now, before I introduce you, Help me understand, you and I have never talked about this. This is really live organic content on, on our talk show format. I used to call you Fred when we first met for several months. And then someone asked me, why do you keep calling Ricky Fred? And I said, because that's, <laughs> that's what I see his name as. That's how I was introduced to him. You then told me that that was your bad, although I don't consider it a bad, that your nickname is Ricky. So I believe that folks are gonna see this show on the various social media platforms that it's on, uh, the various podcast content where the audio is taken and putting on podcast. If people wanna know how to get in touch with you, first tell us how to get in touch with you, then tell us about that nickname, Ricky. Yeah, of course. So uh, my legal name is Frederick Pye, and obviously being an attorney, I want to make sure that my clients can always find me if they ever want to look me up and then they'll be able to find me under the name Frederick Pye. However, once you become a client of mine, you'll become a friend of mine and my friends do call me Ricky. Okay, I have been, uh, I've been going by Ricky since I was born. My mother took the Rick from right. the end of Frederick uh, and made it Ricky because my, I am the third. So my father and my grandfather who lived in the same house, they needed to differentiate me somehow. <laughs> so I became Ricky. Uh, if my clients want to find me, they can look up Fred or Frederick Pye, okay, with Morgan and Morgan. And you can reach me by, do you want me to give the email and phone number or do you want to wait till the end for that? We'll, we'll redo it then, but tell it now. I already started the process. Of course. Okay, so you guys can reach me at F as in Fred, P-Y-E at ForThePeople.com. My direct office line is 305-929-1907. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I don't know why, I always just knew you as Fred, but it makes sense The Frederick would turn into Ricky, uh, particularly with the way you tell that story about that close family. That's wonderful. Yes. That's well, right. I wanna introduce you a little bit more Ricky, with, for folks that do see this and need to know you a little more. Um, the reason that I say you're, I always say you're one of my favorite attorney colleagues, I appreciate a few things about you most. The thing that I appreciate most about you is your demeanor, your personality, just being able to instantly become friends and be able to mesh with folks. So that goes without saying. Another thing that I really appreciate you is as a more senior and seasoned lawyer, I always appreciate working with the younger lawyers that really understand about the work ethic and about always doing the next right thing. And I find that with everyone that I work with here at Morgan and Morgan's in Church Recovery Group, but particularly with you from the very start, we connected and you just really got after it and really soaked up all of the experience that I could share. And so I'm grateful for you and I appreciate how you help our clients. In that uh, way. Thank you for those kind words, Phil. 
I've got to say one more thing about the appreciation that I have for you. Uh, for our client's sake, I know that you worked for several years as an insurance defense attorney, like so many of us did, that learned how insurance companies looked at these type of insurance claims, what insurance companies considered to be authentic and helpful to the policyholders for the insurance claims by doing that, representing the insurance company for years. And now when you come and represent what I always say, represent the good guys, uh, you're able to take that experience, that type of, of knowledge you bring with you and apply it to the claims that you work on for our folks. And so I just want folks again that, that hear this and see this to understand what a great insight you can provide to them from having represented the insurance companies before you came over, before you saw the light and were able to come over and start helping the good guys. Yeah, I really think that background helps out a lot because I do know how the insurance companies, specifically adjusters, view claims, value claims, uh, what information they find very important so I can let my clients know what they need to gather for me to help me represent them. Um, you know, the client, attorney-client relationship is very important that we work as a team. And a lot of the times there's things that I need from my clients um, that I need them to gather. And a lot of that information I learned from representing carriers. Wow. I also, we used to have a kind of running joke on the defense side that there were certain things that the alarms would go off when they happened, like a notice for trial or things of that nature. So I took that with me so I know how to get the alarms going um, on a specific case and let the insurance carriers know that we're very serious, so. And we're gonna talk a lot about that. One of the things that is so useful with your experience and your work ethic is that you have so many different types of cases that you work on that you help policyholders with. Tonight, we're gonna to focus only primarily solely on blasting cases but folks need to know that see you tonight or that hear this in the future, you're also coming back next week and do a whole show on all the various types of cases you work on. So we'll get into the vast array of experience that you have and that you can give for policyholders. But tonight we're going to talk about blasting cases. Correct. You know me, you know the format of the show. I'm a trial lawyer. I believe in the magic of three. I believe in the power of three. We need three points from you on blasting cases. We outline those, forecast them for folks watching and hearing this later, and then we come back and fill in more information on each one of those. So tell folks, what are the three points we're going to cover tonight on blasting cases for insurance policyholders? So the three points that we're going to be discussing regarding blasting claims tonight are one, historical background. What do we mean when we say blasting cases? Okay. Number two, all right, the typical type of damage that you can expect at your property if you're a homeowner that would indicate that you might be uh, the victim of a, a, a blasting type claim. Okay. And the final one is whether or not this is covered under an insurance policy. In, in this specific state, and we're talking the state of Florida currently. Sure, sure. Okay, so outline the first point, start talking, we'll see where that goes. I will kind of facilitate our conversation. Before you start, let me say, you don't need to worry about anything but just giving the information here. We've got some attendees that are on the side here viewing the show. Let me tell you that I will pause from time to time and ask for questions. If they want to put it in the video chat here, I will read the question to you when we get to a good break point. Or if the attendees know how to hover over their name with their cursor and that does the electronic raise your hand function, I will unmute you attendees and you can ask questions directly to Ricky. So I don't see anything there yet, Ricky. So we're good to go. We'll take a break as we go and I'll check back. Tell us about the first point, fill in some information for folks. Of course, so the historical background, what do we mean by blasting and blasting specific to uh, the South Florida region on the East Coast? So there are mine queries 
along the Interstate 75 Turnpike and the Palmetto Parkway. And these mine quarries have actually been there prior to the residential and commercial structures that really abut them in, in the present time. So these residential properties built up around these mine quarries, okay? And the issue really here with regarding blasting is that these mine quarries are attempting to gather up and cultivate limestone rock. And the okay. way that they actually complete that task is by setting off explosives, okay? Now, these explosives send energy waves out into the ground in the atmosphere, and they actually affect the residential structures in the area, okay? So it's been a problem that has developed for probably about the past 30 years that we've seen local government and um, actually the mine quarries themselves doing studies to find out whether or not this mining activity is affecting the residential structures. Um, you know, we'll, we could dive into the studies a little bit uh, more on another night, but that's the basic historical background regarding what we mean by a blasting claim. Okay. Okay. So, that's just a general background in terms of a blasting claim. It's a residential or commercial property that may have been damaged by explosions and activities of mine quarries along these certain roads in Southwest Broward and also West Miami Dade. And so I'm in Texas. Uh, I looked it up after I got to Morgan and Morgan and we started talking about me helping with these blasting cases. We've got blasting rock quarries in Texas. Uh, I have family in Oklahoma. They've got the same in Oklahoma. So we're going to talk specifically about the cases you work on and the particular policies in Florida, but the policies all over are similar. The blasting is blasting wherever it is. So folks that hear this that don't happen to be in South Florida can also apply generally the information that you give to them or their loved ones, their friends that may live close to these blasting quarries as well. Of course, yes. Okay. Certainly. Okay. So we've covered the historical aspect of what it is and how it affects the, the construction industry takes this limestone. It's big in South Florida, for sure, the Florida construction industry in general. What else? Is there anything more historical before we move on to our second point? Um, there's nothing more in terms of historical. I wanted to introduce to people what we mean by actual blasting claims when we discuss them. And next we're gonna be talking about what I think is, you know, the next two topics are more important to our viewers, which we'll start with typical damage, right? Okay. If you're a homeowner in this area, and I know I'm, I'm kind of keeping it um, specific to South Florida just because sure. that's where I currently reside. However, if you are not in the South Florida area, this typical damage perspective, this next topic is gonna to be very important. Okay, if you live next to a mine quarry, all right? So the typical damage that we've seen, and I've reviewed you know, hundreds of these claims at this point in terms of we've had people go to the properties and photograph damage, what we're mainly seeing out of these South Florida properties because they're built out of concrete block, right. CMU, is stair-step cracking to the exterior stucco Okay, we'll also see concrete pavers dipping down or also cracking in sidewalks and things of that nature. You'll see deep cracking to your ceiling and the drywall and also your drywall on your actual wall surfaces. And a lot of the times you'll have a separation between the flooring joist and also the drywall connection. Ooh. Okay. And you'll also experience debonding of tile. And it's because the energy waves actually come up through the structure and shake the property. So in speaking to a lot of my clients and people in the area, you can actually feel and hear a blast when it goes off. So yeah, that's how, Very that's good. the force of yeah. these blasts that somebody a mile or two miles away can actually feel the house shake 
all right? I've heard um, picture frames on the walls shaking, vases on the walls shaking, things like that. So people can actually feel this. Now imagine what is happening to your property, which is not made to withstand this type of movement and shaking. And so, these are not homes that are built right on the quarry. I think you just said it. They're a mile or two, sometimes more away. And still there's that force racking and shaking the house time after time over and over over the years. Correct. And wow. these properties in South Florida specific are not, not made to withstand that type of movement. You know, I'll give a, a, a corollary, a property that's built um, in California is right. going to be made to, to have some give and some movement. Um, this, these, are not, these are not properties that are built that way. You build them to withstand earthquakes in California. I've, I've heard of, I've seen the huge springs that some of those spring type devices that some buildings are built on. That's not how they build them in Texas. That's not how they build them in Oklahoma. And that's not how they build them in South Florida. Correct. Got it, got it, got it. What else, are we, what else kind of damage should folks be looking for and other things to be concerned of? Another thing, a major thing that I've noticed is it oftentimes affects the pool and the pool plumbing, okay? A lot of my clients on these blasting claims have cracks to the pool. They're losing water. Oh. Uh, they've opened up the pavers, gone into the plumbing and found that some of the plumbing is damaged. I've also had clients with interior plumbing damage and they keep fixing these things, various things around the house, and they just can't figure out why that is that they keep having these repeated issues with their plumbing systems to their interior of the, their interior appliances as well as their, their pool area. And it, it likely is due once again to that shaking that these appliances are not built to withstand. So those are another typical sign of damage. And this happens over, this is not something that these houses weren't built last month, last year, and a couple of blasts do it. I mean, these, these structures have been repeatedly subject to the, this ener these energy waves, right? Correct. So this is actually a very important point because a lot of the studies that have been done regarding whether or not the blasting activities in the area are affecting these properties, okay, test the effects of single incident blasts, not the repeated exposure of blasts to properties over long periods of time. And we're talking 20 years, right? If the property was built in 2000, at this point in time, your property has had, sometimes these, these companies are blasting once or twice a week, okay? And they're blasting once or twice a week for 20 years. And your property is so, just not built to withstand that. An insurance company will put up a study that says, we tested a blast. And this one blast that we tested showed that it didn't affect this house. We're fine. You're making this damage up. It's something else. <laughs> and they want homeowners to think that their house being subject to two or three blasts a week for years would have the same effect as a study of had one blast. What was the effect of that one blast period the end? That's the end of the study. Correct. And a wow. lot of people would wonder why isn't the local or state government concerned with this issue and I believe they are but they are the ones who create who who commissioned the studies that are that are actually reporting regarding the single blasts and a lot of the studies have actually made statements that they need more money to figure out the real effects of these blasts on these properties okay uh, one specific study was done in 2000 by Miami-Dade County, and their conclusion was that the Miami-Dade residents do have cause for concern. They truly do. Sure. Well, let's move into these folks that if you find something like this, or if you are having these types of issues, why is it, if folks are wondering why is my homeowner insurance policy that I've only had for a few years, it's a lot like what I face 
when I'm doing my cast iron, when we do our cast iron pipe cases, why does my homeowner insurance currently pay for something that was done 20, 30, 40 years ago? Let's help folks understand and see this. Why does their current homeowner policy going to help repair their home from something that was done from somebody else, these blasting cases, these blasting issues over the years? Give us the insight on that. Of course, yes. You pay your, you pay your homeowner's insurer, okay, a policy to ensure that if you have damage to your property, that you will be indemnified, okay? And if you are having a repeated issue over and over again in terms of these blasts that are causing this specific damage during your policy period, and there is no specific exclusion for it, then it is a covered loss. You've paid your premiums and you're entitled to, to be indemnified and repair the damages to your property, okay? And that's why it's so important to get a professional involved and review a policy and figure out whether or not there is or is not coverage, okay? So that really is the first step and that's where we get involved because if you've ever read through an insurance policy, Phil, you and I certainly have read thousands of them. They're 60 pages long. They have coverage language, exclusionary language, conditionary language, and oftentimes endorsements that change all of the things that we just discussed right there. All of the above, right. So it's so important to get somebody involved who can move through this 60 page, oftentimes 60 page document and figure out whether or not there truly is coverage or not for this type of issue. Well, and I find that when I'm helping folks with their cast iron, I've got more experience with the cast iron pipe plumbing issues than the blasting cases at this point. We just haven't gotten there yet with the blasting cases. But I find that in the cast iron pipe situation, so many of the policies, when you apply for it, they rate what your policy premium is going to be based on how old your plumbing system is. And so you're paying premium dollars or a reduced amount if you've got a new system for the risk of having to repair that. Same thing with the blasting. They can set their rates for where the location of the structure is. If you're near a blasting quarry and it's not excluded, then they're, get, they're charging you, you're paying the homeowner, you're spending your money for the risk that you're gonna have those types of blasting issues. That has been a little bit of a challenge sometimes to help folks understand in my cast iron pipe claim world, how difficult has that been for you in the blasting cases to help them understand that they're paying part of their premium for the risk of living within that proximity to the blasting quarry? Yeah, it's definitely, a, you know, it's, it's a little tough. I think mainly when I speak to, to clients regarding blasting claims, they're just extremely concerned because they don't know what to do about this specific situation, you know? And if they're wondering why to pursue their homeowner's insurance, it's simply put because they paid their premium <laughs> and they need to fix this damage to their properties. Your house is your many times your main investment in your life and you really got to make sure you protect it. And, you know, you paid your premium to make sure that you can actually do that. Awesome. Awesome. Anything else? So we're running into about five minutes left maximum, Ricky. So any other points that we need to make for folks, I just want to give you notice. And for our attendees here, if you have any questions, we haven't seen any yet. But anything for the next few minutes, Ricky, just you've got some time to continue with if you need to. Of course, yeah. And one thing I will note is that these, these claims can be somewhat complex. And, you know, here at Morgan & Morgan, we really took the time and effort to do the research before we even started discussing these types of claims with the community. You know, um, it's, it's kind of engineer specific and it's a little complex, but I, I have found a way to really digest all of this information and try to simplify it when I'm speaking to my clients, which is really important because someday we may be speaking to a jury regarding it. The reason why I bring this up is because you want to make sure that you speak to somebody who does this type of work.
you know there's there's a lot of people who who do first party work but may not have the experience to tackle this type of claim and here at morgan and morgan we spent a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're prepared to to bring on that fight wonderful wonderful ricky yes i'm i'm grateful to be here uh with you uh you've had some success in the blasting cases getting some recovery for your clients another reason that uh wanted to have you on to talk about them uh look forward to sometime we'll get to talk to a jury you and i have been set to talk to juries on some of your various cases uh over the several months somehow the carrier always figures out a way to pay what they should before we get to go talk to that jury so we'll we'll see if maybe the blasting cases will be our breakthrough correct yes we've got two sets so good deal good deal well Ricky, we're up against it. I'm grateful to you. I look forward to having you back next week to talk about the other types of cases in your docket and the way that Morgan & Morgan studies and makes sure that we have the right type of experts and expertise to help in any other kind of case. Uh, before I take us home this evening, anything else you'd like to say to the folks that are gonna see this and hear this as we go? Hey, I thank everybody for coming tonight. And I just wanna reiterate and uh, readdress my, my email address is f P Y E at for the people.com. My direct office line that you can reach me personally at is 305 929 1907. And Phil, I thank you so much for having me on tonight. I love you, brother. Thank you for being here. I'm going to take us home now. Phil's first party parlay brought to you by Morgan and Morgan Insurance Recovery Group. We can help you wherever you are. Good night, Ricky. Thanks very much. Good night, everybody. Thank you, All Phil. Right,